Good morning. This is going to be a, uh, a very unusual service this morning. So um, um, I don't know if, if some of you may know or may not know that, that I'm going to try to lead us in the service. And then Todd is going to be in charge of music. And he's also going to uh, present the, the sermon or offer the sermon. Um, and so um, in your prayers, we ask that you pray for Todd and I, but then also pray for yourselves to make sure that through all this that you guys get some kind of value out of it, so uh, include that in that. So um, let's, um, let's begin with the opening hymn. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are our anxious, sinful, and unclean. We are sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, unleaven our faith, enleaven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> 
We are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. O Lord, make me know my end and what is the measure of my days. Behold, you have made my days a few handbreadths. And now, O Lord, for what do I wait? Deliver me from my transgressions. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. We are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, so govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your glorious return, we may preserve in both faith and holiness of living. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. For the reading, I'm going to squeeze in our uh, announcements. Like I told you, it's going to be kind of one of those deals where I forget what I'm doing half the time. But um, just just a few things. Uh, one of the things, if you have not filled out a pledge card, um, please feel free to do so. They're out um, back on the in the narthex on on the credenza there. Uh, they don't look like uh, pledge cards. You have to look really hard to find them. <laughs> So uh, if, if, you, if you can't find one, let us know and we'll, we'll point you toward that. Um, also, there's going to be, after the second service, uh, there's going to be the decorating of our Christmas tree and, and Christmas decorations here. And so uh, please feel free to come to that uh, and, and help out. Uh, and, and again, just to, to remind you that, that there's going to be some, some strange things happening in the music. And so uh, you, you've done... Fantastic so far, just waiting, so just kind of wait, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get those pulled together. 
The first reading today is from the book of Isaiah, 51st chapter, 4th through 6th verse. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out for me, from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your, eye, your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. The epistle today is from the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 20 through 25. But you, beloved, build yourself up in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now, and forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel. away, my words will not pass away. No one knows that day or hour, but concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. For Stay awake, 
For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. What I say to you, I say to all, stay away. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Let's join together in saying the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, maker of heaven and earth. In Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, 
So Pastor prepared a sermon uh, for us this Sunday uh, at Men's Bible Breakfast yesterday. He was quite disappointed that he wasn't going to get to present it because he thought a lot of it. So um, The text for today comes from the epistle lesson that Russell read just a few moments ago from uh, the book of Jude, beginning with the 20th verse. And this is called Remembered and Remembering. It doesn't take long to forget. By the time you get out of the garage or the kitchen or wherever, you can't remember why you went out there in the first place. Just days or weeks after some national or global event, we usually forget about it and move on to the next big thing. How often are you introduced to somebody and 10 seconds later you can't remember their name? There are lots of things that are easy to forget. It's easy to forget phone numbers. It's easy to forget shopping lists. It's easy to forget, there was a third thing I was going to mention, but now I forgot it. It's easy to forget the letter of Jude, too. Just 25 verses long. It's just one chapter. But Jude has a very important message for us, especially on this last Sunday of the church year, when we look ahead to Jesus' return on the last day. It's about not forgetting. Or, stated positively, it's about remembering. Jude teaches us that the church remembers Jesus because Jesus remembers his church. Does that sound obvious? It's not as obvious a message as it seems. Remember, it's easy to forget. It's happened before. The church has forgotten Jesus. That was one of the foundations for the Reformation. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. What happens when you forget who Jesus is and what he's said? Jude wrote his letter around A.D. 68, roughly 35 years after the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus. Most of the apostles had already died, and Jude, who was not an apostle, he was one of Jesus' half-brothers, was compelled to write to the church in their place. Verses 1 through 3, he wrote with his stated purpose, to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. The church had forgotten Jesus. They had forgotten he was promised to return. They had forgotten that he will come as both savior of those who believe and destroyer of those who do not believe. Having forgotten the reality of who Jesus is, some Christians perverted the grace of God into sensuality, sinning boldly and letting grace abound and denied the only master and Lord. That's from verse 4. Jude's letter is a call to remember who Jesus is and what he has said, both as Savior and as judge. What happens when you forget that Jesus will one day return as the Savior of those who believe? Well, you end up with all that we see that are the problems of this world. People who lie. People who divide. People who think that money and power are the be-all and end-all. I mean, people are so divided these days, I don't think we can get a large number of people to agree on anything. Bacon is good. The earth is round. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Now, maybe you are someone who tries to avoid all of this stuff. And you distance yourself from all of the politics and chatter that's out there. Maybe instead you think back in time and remember the good old days. Believing that the answer to the problems of the world is simply to return to the way things used to be. Or at least to try. I've got good news for you. It's almost likely that in 50 years, people who look back to these years and think now are the good old days. Is that scary? Here's the thing. Thinking like this means you are tempted to believe that the solution to the world's problems is someone or something other than Jesus. 
And that's the problem. Remember, instead that Jesus and Jesus alone is your Savior and the Savior of this world. He has saved you from sin and death by his death and resurrection. He saves you even now by his word and spirit through the means of grace, where he does not remember your sin, but forgives it. He will save you finally and fully from this world that's destined for destruction when he comes again in all his glory and fills you with joy. Now something else we have to discuss here. Because Jude does is what happens when you forget that Jesus will also return as destroyer or judge of those who do not believe. If we forget about the whole judgment day thing, then people can be tempted, just as the church of all times and places is tempted, to be comfortable in one's ways, even in one's sins. Living the way folks want to live, giving yourself license, falling into patterns of thinking and patterns of doing that you know are not in accordance with the word of God. If you forget about that judgment part, you can convince yourself that you don't need to worry about it or change anything. Jude is reminding us that we need to remember instead that Jesus truly will return someday as judge. He calls you to repentance. He calls you to trust in his forgiveness. He calls you to live a new life according to his word. And he calls you to remember that those who do not forget, or those who do forget, will be destroyed in eternal, never-ending punishment. Let me sneak in here with what Jesus says in the gospel reading. We don't know when he is returning. We know he is but we don't know when. In the gospel verses, Jesus says three times that no man on this earth will know when he is coming back. Even though Jesus is as clear as anyone can be at this point, there are a lot of people, especially preacher types, who insist on dwelling on the subject of his return or who even insist on trying to name the day or the exact time when Jesus will come back. This is something that really gets to me. When Pastor first got to the seminary, there were, uh, was a gentleman who sent out a booklet that said exactly when Jesus was going to come again. It was a date in September 1987. Oops. Do you remember all the people who thought Jesus was coming back on January 1st, 2000? A lot of experts thought that. But let me tell you about so-called experts and predictions. In 1990, when Pastor was still in St. Louis, the big news story for months was that a dude by the name of Ivan Browning had made a prediction that there was going to be a major earthquake on the New Madrid Fault somewhere around December 11th or 12th. FYI, he had a PhD in zoology. Because this guy was on the tube for months discussing his theories, people thought he must know what he was talking about. He was on TV. You need to know that the vast majority, 99% of the world's scientific community, thought Browning was nuts and stated that then that we do not have the capacity to predict earthquakes exactly. Browning's prediction had made the whole Mid-South in a panic. From Little Rock to Memphis to St. Louis, schools were closed, stores were selling earthquake kits, people were hoarding, and hundreds of journalists showed up in the remote area waiting. The appointed time came, and nothing happened. And Browning has not been heard from in any significant way since. Well, mostly because he died in 1991. So anyway, we don't know when Jesus is coming back, but he is coming back. We need to remember Jesus, what he did, what he is going to do, and how comforting it is to remember that Jesus never forgets you. He always remembers you and I. 
He hears your prayer that echoes the thief on the cross. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He does. Jesus remembers you. Jesus has been and is always mindful of you. He who has all glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forever, remembers you by calling you, loving you, and keeping you with his church. He has called you through the waters of baptism, where he joined you to himself and to all others who believe in him. He continues to love you by feeding you with the fruits of his cross. He promises to keep you in the one true faith by his word and spirit until the day you see him face to face. In the collect for this last Sunday of the church year, we pray, Lord Jesus Christ, so govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that, ever mindful of your glorious return, we may preserve in both faith and holiness of living, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Jesus does live and reign. He hears your prayer. He answers you. He remembers you. And because he remembers us, we need to remember him. We conclude then with Jude. Now, to him who is able to keep you from the stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, and now, and forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. for the Lord's return, let us pray to our gracious God on behalf of the whole church and for all people according to their needs. Most merciful God and Father, give your holy church throughout the world your grace to serve you with reverence and awe, granting us faith to endure to the end. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you know all our anxieties and fears. Grant to those troubled in mind and spirit the strength to cast every care on you. According to your will, give them quietness of heart and a firm trust in the mercy you have shown us in Christ Jesus. In your mercy. Amen. Place the lonely in the family of your holy church, O Lord, that they may find peace in Christ and fulfillment in loving service to their neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Make the leaders of our nation to walk in the way of justice and truth, that they may use the power vested in them to protect the weak and innocent. Protect our troops, including Preston, Evan, Cannon, Teresa, David, Maya, Grant, Chris, David, John, Ben, Debbie, Seth, Vanessa, Kendon, Christian, and Matthew. Lord, in your mercy. In the face of natural disasters, wars, famines, and troubles of all kinds, fill our hearts with repentance and humility, that in every circumstance we may trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Look with favor on all who are in need. Fill the hungry with good things. Give the poor and unemployed gainful employment. Heal the sick and watch over all who travel. Be near the dying. Give courage to those who suffer oppression and want. Defend all orphans and widows and protect the weak, the unborn and the aged. Lord, in your mercy. Make each communicant worthy to receive Christ's body and blood this day, that they would do so with a repentant heart 
and in faith, not to their judgment, but for their salvation. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace.